Hello dear learners and viewers, welcome to you all. Today I shall talk about an interesting topic. Before starting our session, let me ask you a few questions. First one, why do you need a language? Okay, the common answer might be for communication. We need to learn a language for communication. Okay, so the next question naturally arises. How can we acquire or learn a language? Okay, the answer is we can learn a language in two ways. The first one is acquisition and the second one is learning. But now what is acquisition? Acquisition refers to the way people develop ability in their mother tongue. It is a natural and subconscious process. We can also say it is implicit that means indirect learning and learning refers to the way that you should know the rules of that language being able to use them in that language you have to be very aware of using that language and finally you should have the ability to talk about in that language so this is called direct learning Okay, since we are talking about English language, so we need to learn or we need to have communicative competency in English language. So the third question naturally arises that how can we learn communicative competency in English language? Here one should you know that communicative competency refers to the ability to use a language appropriately in different situation. So dear learners, our focus point is techniques of learning a language. Here you see, th this is you and your goal or aim is to learning English. So we can, our focus point indicates how can we learn English or how can we teach English? Okay, dear learners, there are eight components of English language and if you want to good at in English, you need to practice these eight components and these are listening, speaking, reading, writing, pronunciation, vocabulary or lexical system, grammar, and finally discourse. Now, first one is listening. Dear learners, historically, learning a language meant to read and write. Listening was totally ignored. But in 1970s, a famous linguist, Stephen Krashen, in his input hypothesis, suggests that learners acquisition of a second foreign language begins when they receive messages that is to say they listen something that they can understand and again science has proved that if a child is deep at birth and if he or she remains untreated till puberty, then he or she, that, that means the child won't be able to speak. So it indicates that listening is the first and foremost skill that we need to acquire to learn a language. And in listening, there are few strategies and these are predicting, inferring, monitoring, clarifying, responding, evaluating. Now predicting. Predicting means gaze or imagine beforehand. Inferring, predict, imagine or gaze beforehand based on cues or evidence. For example, you are listening the description of a road accident. Okay? Now you can predict that perhaps 
द कार हैज़ हैज़ बिन क्रास्ट और द ड्राइवर माइट हैव गॉट हर्ट दिस इज कॉल्ड प्रिडिक्शन बट इनफरिंग पर हैप्स यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट द कार माइट हैव क्रास्ट सो यू कैन इनफर दैट बेस्ड ऑन दैट एविडेंस यू कैन इनफर दैट द ड्राइवर माइट हैव बिन गॉट हर्ट so this is called inferring and monitoring good listener notice what they do and don't understand clarifying and in that case the listener must ask question when he or she is unable to understand anything for example when uh, suppose you are listening a story and in that story uh, the speaker is using a word shriek and you don't know the meaning of the term shriek so you can ask what does shriek mean and the sh- the meaning of the term shriek is loud cry then responding listener react to what they hear and finally evaluating check on how well you that means they have understood so these are the few strategies of listening in this way you can develop this skill next one is speaking this is the second strategy or second techniques okay uh, speaking in a new language is difficult than writing or reading or sometimes listening because while you are talking to other your listeners is ready to hear and you don't get any chance to edit or revise what you wish to say that's why speaking is very important and uh, in that case you have to follow some techniques to develop this skill and first one is the student must practice with both fluency and accuracy accuracy what does it mean accuracy means error free and fluency fluency means speaking confidently and promptly without any hesitation or unnatural pauses here one thing you should remember as a beginner you shouldn't speak fluently okay if you speak fluently then you will, uh, naturally you would make mistake or if you give more importance to accuracy then your fluency might be interrupted and that's why you have to practice both fluency and accuracy then next technique is jigsaw activities jigsaw activities means uh, passing information okay for example there are two students student a and student b and they want to go to coxal bazar and the student a Uh, has some information has some pieces of information for example road map that the student b uh, doesn't have but the student b knows very well the bus fare or the plane fare and uh, how to get the accommodation now they exchange their information to each other and finally they uh, uh, they will make a plan how to go to coxes bazar so in this way they can make a conversation uh, between them this is called jigsaw activities and the next one is role play here for example student a and b again the student a will play the role of a police officer and student b will play the role of a tourist telephoning the tourist officer that his wallet is stolen in this way they can make conversation and simulation this is one, uh, another kind of role play but in a real life environment for example i want to teach my student how to talk with the shopkeeper or the grocer in that case the teacher may enter into the classroom with a box of chocolate and now the student will use transactional speaking with the teacher who might play the role of a cashier and the, then the student will pay him and buy chocolate this is called transactional speaking so these are few techniques 
following this technique you can develop your speaking skill next one is reading now what is reading reading means comprehension how combining your background knowledge and the information from the text you can get the meaning and you can develop this skill following this three models one is bottom up process and next one is top down process and the third one is interactive model or interactive process okay now what is bottom up process bottom up process means the student will start with uh, from the from letter and then sound recognition then grammatical structure then sentence then longer test and finally he or she will get the meaning okay that means he will he or she will start from the fundamental stages and top down process top down process that students will start or the reader will start with their background knowledge and then he will he or she will predict then confirm or reject the prediction and finally search the text to confirm or reject the prediction text and for example uh, suppose you uh, the student can read an article from newspaper about road accident now in top down process he can use his background knowledge that means he might guess that in a road accident such or such thing might happen getting this background knowledge now he or she will start reading the article and then he will confirm whether his prediction uh, is true or, or not in that case uh, searching the text to confirm or reject the prediction text in this way they can read the text and the third one is interactive model in this technique the student or the learners of a second foreign language will use both bottom up and top down process and in this way they can get the information now writing this is also very important and uh, in our ac- academic syllabus or curriculum we emphasize writing okay writing is both physical and mental act okay how first of all you have to think and then you have to present it through words okay so writing focuses both impress and express okay and how to develop this skill you can follow this strategy first one is content that means you have to get the idea and then brainstorm brainstorm means first of all list all the ideas you can think of related to a topic okay and then word mapping word mapping means make a list of words related to the topic okay and then quick writing then you start writing something the so first of all have content then do brainstorm and then collect or gather words and then try to write it quickly for example uh, usually 10 to 15 minutes without concern of spelling grammar or punctuation okay in this way you have to write a topic write on a topic and then organization of grammar then you will check whether the sentence is grammatically correct or not and when you will finish your writing then proof reading and editing finally re- reread the text and do editing if necessary so in this way you will develop your skill and then pronunciation this is very very important sometimes uh, you uh, you might say or i can hear from you that you don't understand what uh, the news channel from bbc or cnn uh, what uh, do the news uh, reader say you don't understand what does the news re- news reader uh, broadcast you you can't understand okay so in that case you can following this techniques what are they foster intelligibility during a spontaneous speech okay one thing you must uh, give priority that 
what you wish to say must be understandable, intelligible to others. Pronounce the word correctly, that is intelligibly. Then slow motion speaking, okay, to develop this skill, first of all, you can pronounce that word, difficult word, in a slow motion practice. For example, education, okay. And slow motion speaking develop accurate sound pattern, rhythm, intonation pattern. Next, tracking. Tracking means listening audio video recording with written transcript. In this way, you can understand what the native speaker says. Then, techniques from drama and theater art. Okay, this is also very important. Follow or try to imitate how an actor work during rehearsal and if you follow this technique it will help you develop body language, tempo of speech, peace range and so on. So in this way you can develop your pronunciation. Now vocabulary, this is very important. Uh, if you have a rich vocabulary, your fluency must be increased and uh, you won't get any unnatural pauses, okay? So, how to develop uh, this skill? Focus on most useful vocabulary first. You need not learn all the vocabulary. Just focus on the important vocabulary or the useful vocabulary that we use in our everyday conversation, day-to-day -day life activities. Okay, here one thing I should say that a native speaker normally uses 25, uh, 2500 words in their daily activities. Okay, so you need not learn huge uh, number of uh, vocabularies, rather you should choose selected vocabularies, I mean the useful vocabularies that we use in our daily activities. Okay. Then focus on the vocabulary in the most appropriate way. And the third one is building word families by adding prefixes and suffixes to a stem. For example, uh, you have learned, suppose you have learned a word walk. Now you should know the other words of that family. For example, works, worked, wake, walking, as word family. Next one, vocabulary learn from the, you can enrich your vocabulary from word cards, gazing from the context, you can take help from the dictionary or the dailies or magazines. And finally, practicing spelling rules. So, following this technique, you can develop your vocabulary. And grammar. Okay. Now, what is grammar? Okay, grammar is the description of the structure of a sentence. Okay, and the way in which units such as phrases and words are combined to produce sentence in a language. Okay, and uh, there are two methods of learning grammar, and you have to integrate these two methods. What are the inductive method and deductive method? What is inductive method? In inductive method, the teacher first of all will give you an example and then he or she will try to discover the rules. And deductive method, first of all the teacher will teach you the grammatical rules and then he will give you, he or she will give you examples uh, to clarify that rule. So while you are learning a uh, learning language, especially English language as second or foreign language, you must integrate this inductive and deductive method. And then, the second one, focus on the development of procedural rather than declarative knowledge. Okay? Procedural knowledge means the knowledge of language use, how people use language in their daily activities. Okay? And declarative knowledge means the knowledge uh, of grammar, the rules of grammar. And one thing here you must know that the trend has been away from declarative to 
procedural knowledge and now discourse especially in a spoken english discourse means the study of relationship between language and its context of use that means real language in the classroom okay so here you can follow these steps number 1 make language dialogue and classroom activities as natural try to make dialogue or conversation in the classroom or outside the classroom naturally okay use recording of spoken language it will help you how to speak manage discourse both in and out of classroom remember if you think that you will speak in english only in the classroom then your fluency uh, won't increase you can develop this skill so you have to practice english both inside and outside the classroom turn taking i mean two friends you can do it among your friends suppose student a and b first of all student a will uh, tell something to a student b and then again a student b will tell something to a student a in this way you can make conversation and pair work okay you can now uh, make a conversation among a group of students okay or uh, you can think of a topic now you will discuss among yourself and then finally one of the group leader uh, might tell it to other so in this way you can develop your um, speaking power that means discourse following this technique you can develop it you can practice so dear students uh, these are the uh, eight components of learning english and uh, you need to practice these eight components then one day you will find yourself very good at in english i hope uh, really one day you will be able to master over this language no more today thank you bye